before I introduce our speaker, I just want to share a few comments. Um, and I'll start with a quote. And the quote is, this was in truth not living. It was scarcely even existing, and they felt that it was too little for the price they paid. They were willing to work all the time. And when people did their best, ought they not be able to keep alive? That came from Upton Sinclair in his book, The Jungle. How many people have read The Jungle? I think everybody. If you haven't read The Jungle, ooh. OK, I recommend you read The Jungle. Um, it's a good book. But it's words like these that were written by him in 1906 that started a loud nationwide grumbling that would slowly resurface an incredibly grim landscape here in the United States. You see, conditions for workers throughout the economic gold mine of the Industrial Revolution were filthy and unfair. But the, and it had a two-class system at the time, the ultra-rich and the very poor. It meant that workers were forced to take what they could get, and it wasn't much at that time. We were, in fact, one of the later industrialized nations to incorporate a hardy workers' compensation laws into our factories and beyond. Nearly 40 years before, Prussia's employer's liability law of 1871 would lay the groundwork for today's workers' comp insurance. It took Upton Sinclair's shocked readers to start this movement here in the United States. And only then, by describing the absolute revulsions workers experienced in Chicago slaughterhouses in acrimonious detail. But here's the great thing about America. When people make noise, the government hears. When it doesn't want to hear, we have the power to make it hear. The system emphasizes our voice. It doesn't diminish it. It may not be a perfect system, but this is what makes us America. Ultimately, extensive laws regarding work conditions would be implemented across the nation. Where there had been slums, we created suburbs, schools, and the middle class. Insurance companies mediated between employer and employee, offering benefits to both and improving product for business and the quality of life for the worker. Since 1915, nine years after the publishing of Upton Sinclair's novel, the Workers' Compensation Act has been vigorously protecting and serving us here in Colorado and the State Compens Compensation Insurance Fund, which would later become Pinnacle Assurance. It was created to establish, to administer, and lead that protection. Today, we are honored to have the president and CEO of Pinnacle Assurance, Phil Kalin, here to speak with us. If you didn't get a chance to read his bio, uh, let me share a few things about it. Phil is the president and CEO, as I said, of Pinnacle Assurance, Colorado's leading provider of workers' compensation insurance. Pinnacle is among, is among the country's largest 25 insurers in the workers' comp marketplace. It's pretty impressive. Mr. Kalen has served as the chief, executive of the chief executive of the organizations in both public and privately backed companies, including large hospital systems, as well as healthcare data and technology startups. So unlike just being a CEO, he's actually gone out and started a company as an entrepreneur. So he has a unique perspective. He has been active nationally on the healthcare topics and related to insurance, data analytics, technology innovation, et cetera. Kalen began his career as a hospital system executive with the Henry Ford Health System in Detroit. He then served as executive vice president and chief operating officer with Mount Sinai Healthcare System in Cleveland before moving to Colorado to serve as president and CEO of Denver's Rose Healthcare System. Following his 20-year career, and operating hospitals, Mr. Kalen was chairman and CEO of a privately funded Custom Med Solutions, a healthcare technology company which was sold to FICOM Corp in 2001. Help me welcome Mr. Kalen to the front. 